So my name is Paul Verbeek Must. Don't need to remember my last name. Just call me Paul. Um, up until last week, I was working at Booking.com. I recently switched, so I now work at a small startup in Utrecht called Sprunk. Um, and I also am the organizer of the Frontiers Conference, which is in October. Uh, so if you want to go there, ticket starts. Ticket still starts in about a week. So it's very cool. So um, my talk is called Calendar, um, and it's all about localization. Um, when I was working at Booking, we needed to create a new kind of calendar for our partners that, uh, that own small apartments and things like that. Um, because the old one was just, well, it was just crap. It was like this infinite scroll list of things that you of all your dates, and then if you want to do something, it costs it's like five clicks or something. Um, but the the biggest uh, challenge for me was that it was about it was uh, had to be translated into 40 42 different languages, lots more regions and things like that. So these are just a part of the the, the languages that we had to translate to. Sadly, not this one because that's Klingon. I wanted to do it, but <laughs> nobody uh, nobody thought it was useful. But um, but before I, I actually begin my talk, I will tell you a little bit about, about what it's not about. So this talk is not about going to be about all the things that we don't know about date and time, because that you, you can just find it on the internet. There are great articles about it. Um, one is called Falsehood Program is Believe About Time, which is, well, a whole, whole long list of all the things that we think is correct about time. Um, and there's, if you even, even want to know more things about those things, then we have four more falsehoods programs believe about time. Um, so these articles, they, they just explain things that are weird with date and time and weird about time zones and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to go a little bit into that, but it's mostly about other things. So as I said, working at Booking.com, um, these, are, these are all the languages that we had to implement it. Um, there are a whole bunch of things. Um, there is there is Italian somewhere here, here, and Dutch here, and no cling on there. Uh, so our first step was, was trying to figure out how to implement this thing. Um, so we did some user research and figured out that the user said that, well, our gold thing was crap, and it didn't look enough like uh, a calendar that they use at our competitors' websites, the fancy rental apartments thing with that red A logo. So we did some sketches. Um, this one looks a lot more than the calendar they were used to. Uh, so some sketches, we implemented some uh, front end. By the way, if anyone wants to pick up the logos, these seem a little bit outdated. Um, we created some front ends. There was this Perl thing that we used. And Perl was just some big monolith. Uh, we used a big monolithic Perl thing, and we didn't want to change a lot, so we just integrated to the old Perl code. Um, I never recommend anyone using Perl, by the way. Um, and then, done, um, for at least the first part. Then we needed to do some localization, of course. Uh, and there's a lot of things with dates and times. Um, for example, this w is how it would look in, in the US. It's the Saturday, uh, the Sunday will be the start of the week, and here you will have the uh, format of the, the date is different, and even the price is, is different. So there were a bunch of things that we needed to do. And I use Moment.js for that. Now, this talk is also not going to be about Moment.js, or a little bit. So I will just go through the, the interesting things that we use for Moment.js just to create this calendar. Um, but there's also some other things. If you don't like Moment.js, there's JS, Joda, and date functions, which are pretty cool. And ECMAScript is busy with their own uh, proposal. So we can th throw all those things out. These, it's going to be pretty awesome, but I just started out with it. Um, so first step, let's say we wanted to add the dates, the, the, the day weeks at the top here. Um, in a moment, you can get your locale data. 
and get the first day of uh, the first day of the week, and you will get zero for Sunday, one for Monday, and there are some rare cases where you will get six for Saturday. Um, I tend to change that to Sunday anyway. So, um, and then you can get the uh, localized names of the of the weeks. We needed a very short name, so it, we had a min version. Um, and then you can just add it to the top, very easy. And then we wanted to get the first day here, uh, which is not the first day of the month, it's just the first day of the first week of the month. Or the first, well, this. So <laughs> you get, you create a new moment object, you say the start of month, then start of week, and then say date, and then you get the number of the date. So in this case, it will be the 31st, because if you are in America, it starts on Sunday. and then. Uh, you're going to get the end of the, the month, you do the same thing, but just end of month, end of week, and then the date. And then you just loop through all the things and put them all there. Um, and then we need to get the format, which is a little bit difficult in MomentJS. You need to really dig into the code a little bit to find out where you can find this format. But there's a, uh, a variable, an array called long date format, or a variable called long date format, which if you enter the L, then you get the uh, uh, the date format that you want. There, we have a localized calendar. Well, we got the dollars from our backend because it was just inserted by our users. Um, there's some other localized things that you can uh, need to do here. For example, some uh, countries uh, uses the price at the, uh, at the end, like Germany, they have the euro at the end. There's some small things that you can also do, but those are not that m important because they will still understand what you mean. So after that implementation, then next step is testing. I don't, I don't mean unit testing. Um, we if you want to know about unit testing at Booking, then just grab a few beers, give them to me, and I will tell you all about unit testing at Booking. So that's not going to be about, about um, testing. It's more manual testing, so uh, at least this step. So then we go just go through all the languages, try to find the localized, and then bam, first thing I always forget is RTL. Um, RTL stands for right to left. Uh, like Languages like Arabic or Hebrew are well written from right to left instead of left to right. So this is ca a calendar in Arabic. Um, I, I noticed a, a small localization bug on today's uh, schedule, so I just wanted to point it a little bit out. Say so you have this, uh, this is calendar, this, is not calendar. Who knows what happened here? So we cannot see the track of the yes, that's right. It's probably some sort of the no, printers. Huh? Yes, sir. It's a Persian. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's very. That's thank you for that. <laughs> it, it basically what happened is there there are spaces in between the characters, and then they fl it's left to right instead of right to left. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um. So what what else do you need? Uh, so this this uh, right to left where what happens here is actually automatically done by the browser. So if you have, if you have your characters there, will basically switch, and I can show you that real quick. Um, if I go here to my talk, if I select these lines, then you will see that here it's only select from right to left because the characters are switched. Um. So the things that you want to do is a little bit of CSS. You want to go change your float left to fro float right, your margin left to margin right, so you can switch these columns around, and then you can s switch the rest around as well. Um, probably you can, this is interesting because the left arrow suddenly needs to go month into the future instead of the month into the past. <laughs> that took me a while to figure out. Uh, you can do that two ways. Uh, I, I did it in JavaScript, but you can also just do it in CSS, just rotate the arrows and then, but yeah. Um, so that was right to left. It's, there's a lot of things. Right to left takes a lot of time, by the way. It's not that fast, but um, so more testing. So as you said, no unit testing. The manual testing is done. And then we want what we did is just add a whole bunch of users to a beta test. We don't ask them. We just add them to a beta test, and we give them feed uh, ask for feedback. What do you think of this new awesome feature? And they get a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and some, some feedback. 
Um, and we got some, some interesting feedback, so well, very positive feedback. I can finally find my reservations because we also put reservations on that calendar. That's very useful. Um, I love the new interface. Uh, pretty sure I know what it was. <laughs> uh, we also got some, some negative feedback, like hate it, bring the old one back, and who made this smiling chocolate ice cream? But there is also some, some feedback that we got that were actually useful. Um, there's a difference between asking users for feedback and asking feedback from your personal testers. Users just say, hey, reservations aren't showing up, and they have to figure out what it was because we weren't allowed to contact those users. Um, so things like that are, are very interesting because if reservations are, are not showing up, that's not good. Or if the date selection is not working, that's not good. You really need to fix those, those things. But you have to dig through all the negative comments and positive comments. Or well, some people just tell their whole life story on, 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 the, on those feedback. <laughs> um, so then we get on to bug fixing. And those four things that I just showed, I want to go through them because these four things were the most interesting parts that I found. Well because I, I, like, I kind of like bug fixing. It makes me feel like a detective trying to figure out what's going on. So uh, there are two things that I saved, which was not a lot. One of us was a user ID, and the other one was the language they selected. Um, I really would if you try to save as much as you can, not do it like me, because I, want, I needed user agent strings sometimes that didn't have it, and all those things. I was just lazy. Don't be lazy if you, if you ask for feedback. Um, but luckily I had a user ID, and for this particular user, they actually said that this, the 15th and 16th, is just gone. And I tried it, I tested it, and for me it was there. So I'll, I kind of want to take you through a little bit of the process that I went through. I was trying to fix it, and I'm going to do some live debugging, live bug fixing, which is nice. I'm trying to figure out what went wrong here. So I looked at it, everything was fine changed the language to Brazilian, uh, Portuguese in Brazil, which was the language, everything was still fine. So then I thought, well, I probably know what's going on here. Um, the time zone is probably the, 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 the reason that it's, uh, it's, it's bugged. Um, so let's just switch to the time zone. Um, right. So let's uh, remove the time zone. Oh. Uh, let's first switch to the right date. It was uh, October, I think, 16th. And then I switched to the time zone. Uh, I know Verona, yes, I know. Uh, where was it? It was somewhere here. It was this, this time zone, which I, if I remember correctly. So let me go back to this. Everything is still fine. That's weird. So what, ha what, what we did, I did then was looking at my screen for an awful lot of time, trying to figure out what was wrong. That doesn't help. Um, so I went to a colleague, asked him, can you try to, to find what was wrong? He did the same thing, changing language, um, going through the code a bit, and then commenting me on how crappy my code was. Um, and then he switched to the time zone, and then for him, the bug was there. So trying to figure out what was wrong here. So we, we kind of checked what was what was the problem? And I saw that I checked this one, and he checked this one. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that was that was fun. I c the problem here was there's an entire wiki page on time in Brazil. Is anyone from Brazil here? No, okay. So there's a whole wiki page on time in Brazil about all the fun things they do there. And um, this was the code that, that was creating the bug. It was a very crappy code, as my colleague already said. Um, and this is what fixed it. So I switched the add one day to start of day. Um, and that uh, the reason what was, what was going on is Instead of adding one day, moment adds 24 hours. And it was in October, so I thought, okay, what's, what's the problem in here? Um, so it's summertime in Brazil. So Southern Hemisphere, summertime starts in October. Um, and it adds 24 hours, so 
it's not the same. So if I if I uh, start, say start of day, it will be midnight. I add one day, it will be one past midnight instead of midnight itself. So it will need not be the same. So if I switch this around, it would be the same. There's also a lot of fun things that if you want to, if you look at the time zone and you actually see that Brazil switches time zone, oh, switches to summertime differently when uh, when they're in carnival because they can go on a little bit longer, I think. Um, so why was it happening only in the particular thing that I chose? Well, the Brazil has something that they not the entire country adheres to summertime. So just north of Brazil, no summertime, uh, from Brasilia and Brazil itself, uh, the rest of Brazil doesn't have summertime. So fig figuring this out was like, uh, it took us a month or something. So just, just a switch of this code took us a month. And this is also very interesting. There's a site about news about time. And time zone switches. So uh, I had a problem myself when I was going to Siberia. Uh, first time I checked, I, th I thought, oh, um, I have to leave at this and this hour. And then Putin said, OK, the, the time zone in uh, Novosibirsk is now going to be one hour further. What? what? <laughs> OK, change my flight. Thanks. <laughs> So there's if here it you will see everything that that is changing about time zones and m if you want to do something like moment js you have to know that they are not up to date always. So the next thing is why are close dates red? So if someone closes a date so that no one can book on that date, it's red. Seems logical, right? Is this a good day or a bad day at the stock market? This is a very good day at the stock market. Because in Eastern Asia, uh, red is positive, especially on stock markets and on other things. Uh, it's cultural differences. So green is bad, red is good. Um, so this, they, they say, OK, um, I closed my date because it's, uh, I have a funeral. It's not positive for me. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, so we switched it to gray, and everything was fine again. But Look at colors when you're trying to do things. Uh, just don't assume that colors are always good. Date selection is not working. So we have this date selection. If you click on it, jQuery UI date picker opens up. Why jQuery uh, UI is, well, someone else already implemented it somewhere. So I thought it was easier. It was not, by the way. Um, so let's say you have this date. Does anyone know what, month, uh, what date this is? Prob probably not, because you need to figure out what the, the the format is. So if you want to switch the, that to jQuery UI, so you, uh, I want to connect the, the two inputs, then you can say date picker, the parse dates, and then add the format that you got here with the date that was inputted. But this gives you an error, because this is what you should do at jQuery UI. You have this parse date. Well, I already figured out that before I got the bug, so I wrote a script. It's on GitHub somewhere. I will not go through everything. Um, but the bug, what was going on, is there was a lot of people from Germany that were complaining. And it, it happened in this regular expression. This actually finds the dashes and slashes in the, in the date. Um, Germany uses a dot. And there's a lot, uh, other languages that use a dot as well. So I just added the dot to the date, drag x, and then thought, well, let's just use all these characters and be done with it. But then there was this. So I said that I saved languages. I just saved the string of the language, so not the ESO formatted language. So I got this. I needed to figure out what language that was. So I used all the trusty tools I have, something like Google Translate. And Slovenian, uh, OK, it detected Slovenian. Great. Did you mean this? Well, probably. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how I suppose no, it's probably a different way to write it. Um, well that was so I tested it again, switched to that language, nothing was wrong. So what, uh, what was, there is this language and that language. And this is not Slovenian. <laughs> um, this is, that's uh, Slovak. So if you do this and it switches to Slovak, he knows that it's Slovak. So why did he in initially says that he detected that language? Uh, this is Slovenian, by the way. So it's um, that's that's 
fun. Uh, so don't always trust those tools. It is good to use the tools like Wikipedia and Google Translate to figure some things out, uh, but don't really rely on it. Because well, um, so okay, let's go a step further. What was going wrong here? They don't use a dot. They use a dot and a space. So instead of this, I had to do that. <laughs> Great. So bug fixing is now, oh, we have to work on the code the entire night. It's just we have to look at our screen and scream at it for the entire night before we figure it out. Next thing is was the prices aren't showing up properly. Um, so we have this, there was a reservation, and this was the price. It, uh, it kind of uh, figured out that, well, it is a price for one night. It will never be more than 10,000 euros, so it would easily fi fit in here. Um, so then we got this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's more than, is it 800,000 and what? Huh? Yes, it was rupees, rupiah. Um, one over a million, sometimes it was over 10 million. Um, I, how I fixed this, I would just make the font a little bit smaller. <laughs> <laughs> and if it still didn't fit, then if you hover over it, it will do overflow visible instead of hidden, and then everything was fine again. Um, there the fixes are very small, it's just trying to figure everything out, it's not. Th this also took me a while before I figured out, well, I, I see everything correctly. Why can't you see it? It works on my machine. So these were the, the interesting things that I wanted to show you. Um, even if you read all the articles about date and time, don't make assumptions that you know everything. You will never know everything about date and time. I don't think the, the calendar is now bug-free because I made a lot of assumptions, <laughs> but you shouldn't. And you try to make your code as resilient as possible. And localization is not just translation, and it's also not just about date and time. There's whole mm, regional things with colors and uh, with orders and everything that uh, that you might not know. Uh, localization is uh, just trying to make everything possible for everyone. Gather meaningful feedback. Don't do what I did. Um, try to get as much feedback as you can. Maybe you can even give users some way of how to write feedback. It could be that then they just don't write anymore. Um, but you should try to get as much feedback as you can, because otherwise the bug fixing will just take very long. And bugs will happen. You don't think that if you follow my advice, then I will never get any bugs. Bugs will happen. Bugs are not a big problem, because, well, we just make complex things. And there's also always going to be bugs in there. Um, and bug fixing is kind of like being a detective. It's kind of like also being a traveler. I get to travel to all these different places in my head, not for real, otherwise we'll still be working at booking. Um, so I was going to travel to all those different places and try to figure out what was going on and wha why do, do cultures do things differently. And it was actually pretty fun, especially the, 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 the red dates. It was pretty fun to figure out uh, how different cultures go with different colors and why we eventually made everything gray and sometimes a little bit blue because blue seemed to, seemed to be okay. So that was it. My Twitter handle is underscore Paul Verbake. Um, if you want to follow Frontiers, it's FrontiersConf. I love getting emails. So this is my email address. It's my ICQ number. Uh, <laughs> this is my join in link if you want to give me feedback. Uh, so thank you very much. <laughs>